on everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Now I have a tool review for you today. Some of you guys have been asking me about this. When is the tool review coming up? So here it is. This is the Record Power WG250 10 inch whetstone grinder. I've had it now for six months. I've been using it for six months, sharpening mostly my wood turning tools and some of my chisels and hand planes on it as well. So I've tested it out, I've used it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the six months user review on it now. It's not gonna be a super in-depth review. I'm not gonna go through all the specs and all that. I've already done an unboxing video on this. I've showed everything that comes with it and I showed everything that came with the wood turners pack that I've also got. I'll give you a quick demonstration. I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be the six months user review, like I said. And if you're a little bit impatient and you want it all summed up at the start, um, it will sharpen your tools for you. It works, isn't any good. Mm. Okay, so let's jump into this review. And like I said, this is the Record Power WG250, which is the 10 inch whetstone grinder from Record Power. Now, why did I get it? Well, I needed something to sharpen my wood turning tools. Um, budget was what it was. This is very reasonably priced, so I thought this might be a good option for me. It has Record Power written on it, which is another reason I went for it. I have a number of Record Power tools around my shop, which I absolutely love. I'm a big fan of my pillar drill, which is made of completely of cast iron. It is bomb proof. They make fantastic band saws. I also have a lathe, which is excellent. And Record Power dust extractors are fantastic. I have the DX4000, which I use to plug into my main extraction system and I also use it for my shop vac. Shop vac. You guys will see, have seen me bang on about that thing loads of times. It's absolutely fantastic and I love it. So it said record power tools on it. That's why I picked it up. Okay, let's quickly talk about the build quality of this tool. Now, if you've watched my unboxing video, you would have saw my first impressions and they weren't great. And my opinion to this day is not great still. The build quality is not up to scratch in my opinion. Now, bearing in mind it is at a certain price point, this is in around the 300 euro mark. It's a third of a price of a Tormek. It's about 150 euros cheaper than a Robert Sorby Pro Edge. So you kind of do get what you pay for, but I did expect it to be a little bit better than this, the fact that it has Record Power's name on it. Um, it does feel kind of cheap cheaply made. Now everything on this thing works but just feels cheap and I think that's going to be the theme for this review. The toolbar is good, the wells don't look too great on it but where they attach that's good and strong so that needs to be good and strong and it is so no complaints there. They have a mechanism on the back called the torque adjuster. It is the most flim flimsiest thing I've ever seen in my life. When you saw my initial unboxing you would have seen me laugh at this and uh, yeah my impression is still the same. It's literally just a bolt uh, screw through the frame that pushes it against the motor that stops the motor slipping back and keeps the tension on the belt onto the pulley wheel and that is your torque adjustment it is a it's hilarious it would be better without it um, because it's pushing a screw straight against the motor they're damaging the body of the motor i don't use it i don't like the idea of just driving a raw bolt straight into the side of the motor without any protection or any stop or anything to push against and uh, yeah it's quite flimsy the, the body is quite thin and um the treads are already wearing on that uh, treaded section going through the body there, so it's not great. It's a terrible idea. The attachments that come with it, like the little tools, you have an angle finder here. Again, it feels pretty cheap. It's like something that came out of a Christmas cracker, but it does work. So yeah, the theme is things work or are cheaply made. Same with the angle uh, finder. So you wanna set your angles for your tools. It's not great, it does work. Again, it's not great. It is magnetic, however, so it does stick to the back of the machine, which is nice. The whetstone, now that's the kind of business end of this. Again, a bit of a disappointment. It's very soft and very coarse. You wear the stone down extremely quickly. I have to re-flatten this stone every time I put a bowl gouge on it. It puts a big U valley into the stone just from one sharpening and uh, then it's no good for your chisels or for your plane blades you have to reflatten it and you lose quite a bit of the stone every time you do that it is very soft and very coarse you will not get a super polished edge from this machine the leather strop that comes with it again another thing i don't like it has a big glue joint in the middle of it and it is not truly round so you'll see when i'm sharpening this in a minute you'll see the blade it will keep hopping off it, skipping off it because it's not perfectly round. Like other than that, the motor seems good, it works. It has a speed control on the front of it, which is a nice little feature. As the stone begins to shrink, you can up the RPM so you keep a constant rate of speed over your blade. And if you want it faster, 
uh, removal, you can up that RPM. If you want slower removal of stock, you can down that RPM. So yeah, that's the first impression, or my impressions of the build quality. Not great, it's cheaply made. I expect a bit more from Record Power Tools. That torque converter or that torque adjuster is just a joke and uh, yeah, enough said about that. Okay, before we sharpen some tools, I'll just quickly go through what the machine comes with. So obviously you get the 10 inch water stone, you get your leather strop. There's a nice little drawer at the back for storing some of the tools and jigs. You get a flat jig for your chisels and your plane blades. You get the diamond bit for re-flattening the stone and the jig to go with it. Then you get the stone for changing the grit of the uh, water stone, so you can have a fine or coarse. Now, this is very soft as well. I've already worn a big patch in this, and uh, yeah, it's not gonna last too much longer. So that's another thing that's very soft, as well as the stone itself. Now, I also bought the wood turner's kit, so I'll give you a look at that. So you get this uh, flat bed. This is for your chisels, your parting tools, your skew chisels, that kind of thing. You get this little, uh, jig this is for your uh, rough gouges and then you have this guy which is for your bowl gouges your spindle gouges and that kind of thing and that comes with this little jig here that that sets into in the barrel. I'll show you all this in operation now you also get the extra leather strop wheel for your gouges when you buy the wood turners pack which is what I did so let's get sharpening I'll give you a quick demonstration of this and I'll show you what I like and what I don't like about the sharpening process Okay, let's do a bit of sharpening. Now we'll start with a plane blade. This is an old plane blade. It's nearly worn out, but it's gonna be used for demonstration purposes. So we wanna get some water into the water trough. Now, this wheel will absorb a lot of water as all water stones do. So your first liter or so may just disappear into the stone. So fill up your trough to the high water mark, turn it on and just let your stone run through that for a little bit and that water will actually disappear out of your trough, trough into the stone. So you just keep topping it up. Until the water wheel or the water stone is uh, nice and saturated. Okay, that should be good to go. Okay, let's sharpen this plain blade. Now it's nice and simple. The jig actually works quite well. Um, I don't have, really have too many complaints with this. The only thing that annoys me about it is the plastic bushes pop out a lot. They're not securely held in. That's a little bit annoying. Um, but it's very, very easy to set up. Just get your plain blade into the clamp. Rest the side of the plane against the two stops, uh, top and bottom. That ensures that your plain blade is square in the jig itself. Slide the jig onto the bar let your blade rest on the water wheel. Now, the angle is not adjusted by moving the blade backwards and forwards. Get that in, let it protrude a certain amount. You can kind of guess that, clamp it down. You will adjust the angle by raising and lowering this bar. Using this tool then, you rest that on your water wheel or on your whetstone. I keep calling it a water wheel. It's a whetstone and when this part here sits flat against the blade, you are good to go. That means it's set to the angle that you have set to here. And it's a plain blade, so 25 degrees is kind of a standard angle for the plain blades, and that's what we're gonna set it to. Okay, very quickly, this is just how we set up the plain blade to the right angle. Here is our angle setting tool. So we've that set to 25 degrees. We rest the round part here on the water stone itself. This part goes against the blade, and when this is flat against the blade, we know our angle is correct. So let's see if the camera will stay focused on that. You can see there's a bit of daylight there. So what I want to do is drop this bar down until that sits perfectly flat on my plane blade, just like that. And now I know I'm at 25 degrees. So now we can begin sharpening. So I'm just going to lock the arm so it doesn't move up or down and we're good to go. Okay, a quick demonstration and I'm using this. It's nice and simple. Just turn on the machine, the water then will stone will ro rotate around, it will pull the water up onto the blade, keeping it cool so you never overheat your blade, which is a nice thing about using a water stone, and uh, it's pretty easy to sharpen. So it's only just a case of run it over and back, which is nice. Again, this is where the machine comes into its own. I found it very good for doing plain blades. It's nice and easy to use. It's uh, relatively easy to get a sharp edge, although you won't get a polished edge. So for furniture, making that kind of work, that fine uh, hand tool woodworking, it's not gonna get you a polished edge on your tool. 
Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But if you have a big chip taken from your blade, it's a good way of uh, regrinding the bevel. So you're not spending all day doing it by hand. This will do it pretty quickly. And we can up the RPM. Just work it over and back. Now, there is one bugbear I have with this, which is really, really annoying. So you have a little guard here around the handle to make the water go back into your trough. But every time you take your uh, plane blade over to this edge, it misses that, runs down the side of the machine, and you have water all over your bench. So it's another just little thing that could have been got right, that's not right. So you can see the water droplets dropping there. I'll give you a close up and all that runs down onto your workbench. So if you're gonna use this tool, make sure you have it somewhere while getting water all over it, it's not a big deal. And it is a big deal when it's on top of your workbench like this. There's just a quick close up. You can see what I mean. As soon as I get out to this edge, the water drips down the side of the handle there, runs onto the top of your machine. That then runs down onto your workbench. This is the guard here that takes the water back down into it to the trough. But uh, yeah, it doesn't actually work. As you can see, all this water now is running down onto the machine itself and onto my bench. And I have a puddle forming now on my bench, which is slightly annoying. So that's just a little thing that could be changed and uh, it could be a lot better. Okay, so now we have our bevel set and you can see this machine, it's not actually bad for doing plain blades, apart from the fact that the water runs down the side of the machine. And obviously the faster that, that uh, water stone moves, the bigger the problem. So you always have to have a towel on hand and uh, yeah, I don't usually sharpen on top of my workbench because of the water that spills out of it. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. So now we're gonna go on and we're gonna polish the edge using the leather strop here. So I just flipped the bar around again. We want, to, we want the leather strop to be moving away from the blade, not towards the blade, because you just strip that strop leather uh, belt straight off the wheel. So yeah, you don't want to cut your leather to pieces, so have it run away from the blade. Again, set your angles, make sure that that's correct, because your water stone will shrink, and when you set your angles on this, it won't match this. So always check both sides, nice and simple. And again, it's just a case of get some metal polish. Should I give you some metal polish, some, some auto salt? So just get some of that into the belt all the way around and just set it off and then we can put a polished edge on this as best we can so switch it on and then just work that over and back now i don't know if you can hear that that bump 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 the wheel is not perfectly round so the blade is kind of skipping on it and that's where the glue joint is so that's a little bit rough the leather, the, again, another thing that's cheaply made is this leather strop. But uh, I'll give you a look at the finished result now with this blade. Okay, so there's a quick look at our finished blade. You can see it's not highly polished, but it is very sharp. Now, I don't use this to set my final edge. I take this to the, the uh, Scary Sharp sharpening system that I have, and I polish a secondary bevel onto this. But for getting rid of chips and setting the bevel, it's not a bad machine, other than those few little issues that I was showing you. So there we go, there's our plane blade. Okay, so that's sharpening a plane blade on this particular machine. Now, if you were just doing this, if you were just using it for plane blades and setting bevels on chisels and stuff, it's not actually a bad little machine and you probably will get your money's worth out of it. The water stone will wear pretty quickly and the strop is not great. And you can hear that kind of bumping in it, which is a little bit annoying. And it, the fact that it spills water outside its guard down onto the machine and down onto your table is also slightly annoying. But other than that, yes, it does the job. It's easy to set up relatively quickly. Everything does what it's supposed to do. The angles are the angles. So the center or the angle finder the setter, even though it is a little bit on the cheap side, it is accurate, which is the most important thing. So there we go. So paper cut test, we have some paper here. You can see how sharp it is. It's pretty good. So that's, that's pretty sharp. It's not actually too bad. You could actually go woodworking with that quite easily now, but if you want that polished, honed edge, you will have to do a little bit of extra work yourself on a sharpening system or a leather strop or a water stone, something like that. But this will get you certainly close enough to where you need to be. It will set that edge for you. It takes all that work out of the hand work out of it. And that's what I've been using it for. So if I chip my blade, I do go to this and use it for that. It's not actually too bad. 
Okay, so onto the reason I bought this actual machine, that was to sharpen my gouges for wood turning. I had no way of sharpening them, so I bought this system along with the wood turners pack that you can get for it, and I use it to sharpen my bowl gouges. Now, like before, it does work, but it has issues, there are problems, some of them are really annoying. So we'll go through that now, let's have a look, and what we'll do is we'll just give this a quick sharpen, this bowl gouge, just as a way of demonstrating the issues. Okay, so one thing you're gonna find when it comes to sharpening all your gouges is that every single one of them has a different angle. A lot of people have different profiles, different uh, sweat back grinds, fingernail grinds, all the different grinds they wanna use, 45 degree, 35 degree, 50 degree, whatever angle you wanna use, everyone is different for your roughing gouges to your spindle gouges to your bowl gouges. You will have to set that on this every single time. So what I recommend, and this is true of any whetstone that you get, you can build little cheat jigs. So you can have this one just for setting the jig onto the gouge itself. I'll show you in a second so that goes onto my bench I can take my tool then pop on the jig and I can set that to exactly where it needs to be tighten that down and that's done in seconds I can then take this guy which tells me how far out my bar needs to be and that roughly sets me in the ballpark of where I need to be so I can set this then from my bowl gouge which is all the way out here set that up tighten it down and now I know I'm roughly where I need to be. Now obviously, as this wheel shrinks, you're gonna to have to keep checking your angles because the angles are only the angles because of this distance between the tool rest and the wheel, and that changes as the wheel shrinks. So this gets you in the ballpark, and then you can just check every now and again to make sure that those angles are consistent. So that's how I do it, so nice and simple. So now that we have our uh, bowl gouge set up in our jig, let's sharpen it. Okay, so here's our gouge jig. So this fella slides on. He has a little uh, divot in here and this pin here sits in. So you set the angle on this guy. So depending on how far back you want your wings to be swept, you can change this angle here. I have it set to my particular bowl gouge. That sits in there like that. And you work it from left to right like this. Now, it's a little bit awkward. It takes a, um, a bit of getting used to. There's a real issue in so far as this is not held in place. So as you're working it, as you can see, it's very, very easy for that to slip out. It rises up out of it the whole time. So you kind of have to keep a hell of a knob here, push down and work it back and forward. And you can see if you're not right, standing rightly square behind the machine, it's very, very hard to keep that in there. So that's a real issue with this. The um, Tormac one is actually attached to the bar so it can't fall off, which is a much better system. And the Tormac one will actually fit this, but we'll talk about that in a little while. So uh, yeah, this is the bow gauge. Like I say, it works, but it doesn't work well. So let's give this a quick sharpen now. So that's the kind of um, momentum or pattern you want when you're moving it back and forward. But trying to keep that pin in there is quite hard, especially when the wheel is gonna be spinning away from you and it's pulling the gouge up onto the wheel. It keeps pulling it out of this. So uh, yeah, I don't really recommend this. It's not great. But again, if you're on a budget, you can get it to work. I have got it to work with a bit of practice. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but let's use it. You can see the way it catches the thing if you're not holding on. And it will pull that gouge up and out of it. So you just gotta be careful of that. Okay, so there's a quick look at the grind. You see you can get a nice consistent grind all the way around, I don't have a problem, and it is really, really sharp to use. The only problem again is the fact that this sits into that little socket. The socket doesn't hold on to the jig and it keeps slipping out and moving around. It's hard to get a consistent grind. There's much better systems on the market. Like I said, the Tormek one is actually fixed, so you can just move it left and right, and the Tormek one actually fits this, so it might actually be a good upgrade in the finish. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying to use. So yeah, there we go.
Okay guys, here's a look at the stone after just resharpening our bowl gouge. So you can see now it has a hollow right here in the middle. So again, I didn't re-grind the bowl gouge, I just sharpened it up. And you can see what we're left with here. Now we have to flatten this again, so we've got to take it down to its lowest point. So we're going to lose this much off the stone again. And that's just from sharpening it. So the stone is very soft, which is another issue with this. Definitely requires a stone upgrade. Right, so guys, we've sharpened our bowl gouge and we've sharpened our plane blades. That's just a quick demonstration of some of the things you can do with this machine. Again, I'm not going to go super in-depth into this and sharpen everything. That's a how-to video. This is a review video. So this is just my six months user review. Some of you guys wanted me to do this and tell you what I thought of the tool. Now, let's sum it up, I suppose. So again, it could be built better. The build quality is not great. It has a lot of bugs in it. Again, that water running outside of the machine is extremely annoying. The stone is very, very soft. and um, You have to regrind it after you use or sharpen a bowl gouge every single time. So it's shrinking rapidly. Um, the strop or the leather wheel is not great. Other than that, the machine works quite well for plain blades and chisels yeah no issue whatsoever it will do them for you all day long so if you want it just for that then it might not be a bad machine again at this price point there's not much else out there it's a third of the price of a tarmac it's about 150 euros cheaper than a robert sorby pro edge um, would I recommend it? I suppose that's the biggest question. I would say go into it with your eyes open, understand what you're getting. You're not getting a super high-end machine. There is build quality issues. The stone is very soft. That torque, if you read the specs and you think, oh, it has a torque adjuster. It doesn't have a torque adjuster. It has a bolt uh, that doesn't really do much. So it doesn't have that. But other than that, yeah. It works. It works. It just doesn't work very well, in my opinion. Now, what you could look at this to do is upgrade it so if like me at the time i was really on a budget i hadn't the money to spring for the, so the sorby pro edge i definitely hadn't the money to spring for the tormek with the wood turners package that's why i went for this and again i am a big fan of record power tools so don't let this review put you off record power tools they make some fantastic drills lathes uh, their dust extraction stuff is top notch their band saws are brilliant it's just this one tool is not great and it's the only tool that i have from record power that i'm not a big fan of so don't let it put you off record power but uh, yeah think twice about this maybe if you wanted to buy it you were on a really low budget and it was the only sharp system you could get again it's perfect for plain blades and chisels almost it's not great for your wood turning tools but you can use it but you could look at upgrading it now that's possibly what i'm going to do over the next a few months over the next year is maybe look at upgrading this wheel maybe spring for a diamond wheel or maybe the tormek wheel will fit this so maybe upgrade it to that the tormek jigs will also fit this so that's another um definite upgrade you could do so again if you didn't have enough money to buy the tormek t8 or something like that you could go for the record power um 10 inch this is the wg250 with the intentions of upgrading the jigs and things like that so maybe stay away from the record power wood turners package and buy yourself the tormek wood turners jig for your gouges and stuff and that works a hell of a lot better and it will actually work with this machine which is it, it, it's one way to go one avenue to go down in my book so let's sum it up guys do i recommend it it's okay it's not great it does work it's not built great so go into it with your eyes open you've seen my review that's my opinion of it i was hesitant to make this video because i do really do believe if you haven't anything good to say then don't say anything at all so only review tools that you like but you know me i am 100 percent truthful on this channel i give you my honest opinion you guys asked me to review this tool so i've reviewed it now it's not great it does the job that's how i sum it up so there you go guys I'm going to get out of here now, so if this has been informative, if you've liked this, give it a thumbs up, comments and questions below, anything you feel I've left out. If you guys have this, you have a different opinion, or if you've had a different experience with it, be sure and let me know in the comments below what you think. Again, I, this is just a very quick user's guide to this machine and my initial, or my impressions after six months of use. So there we go, guys. I'm going to get out of here now. I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.